How can I be sure in a world that's constantly changing? How can I be sure? Hello, poker players. This is T Sub Ready again. This time I will talk about pre flop, game theory, tournament strategy when we have small stacks. For the purpose of this lecture, small stack strategy applies when the effective stacks are less than 20 big blinds. This is when we will begin to open jam in a few rare situations. In some respects, this is the most important phase of our tournament since it often dictates whether we make the money or not. This lecture is based on information published in the third edition of Lectures on Poker, Volume 1. Although the third and second editions are the same for large stack strategy, the third edition is a significant improvement for small stack strategy. Enjoy! Tournament strategy is much more complex than cash game strategy, mainly because our strategy is complicated by factors such as ICM, chip utility, and the tournament bell curve. I cover these uh, factors in video TL002, which you should review before tackling this video. This video introduces our holy grail strategy for small stacks, which is when the effective stacks are less than 20 big blinds. My goal here is to create a simple small stack baseline strategy we can use in a live table without much study or memorization. Then we usually adjust from this baseline to account for our poker landscape. This adjustment is critical during a small stack play because our tournament life is often in jeopardy. All of my Holy Grail strategies are based on the GTO Wizard 8MAX MTT model, which is accessible for free. I will analyze stack sizes from 6 big blinds to 17 big blinds for this lecture. Finally, GTO Wizard assumes a big blind ante, which appears to be a donation from the card room. But the blinds are posted from our starting stacks before the hand is dealt. Our primary goal during the early stages of a tournament is to play well enough to delay the onset of the small stack zone which is the region where our options begin to include jamming. That zone begins when the effective stacks are lower than about 20 big blinds. Reaching this zone is almost inevitable. Even when we have a larger stack, our opponents will often have less than, 30, uh, less than 20 stacks, which can also put us in the small stack zone. Let's look at what GTO Wizard has to say about open jamming with small stacks. Here we plot the GTO open jamming frequency versus our effective stacks. We can see that we never have an open jam with 20 stacks except from the button. But the button jamming range is only 5.1% and these are all mixed strategy combos which we can either jam or just open with. Above 20 stacks we never open jam. But as the effective stacks get smaller our jamming frequency increases ranging from about 28% to 48% for 4 stacks. We can see that these curves are all fairly linear. They are also nearly parallel with each other. So we can re represent them with some simple equations. Before we can create our small stack algorithms, we much, must recognize that the ranking of hands is different for opening a combo compared with when we are in a jamming situation, such as jamming, reshoving, or calling a jam. For example, Pairs and combos containing an ace are stronger in a jamming situation. Suited combos are weaker. So when we are in a jamming situation, we account for this by using the four-point rule. We simply start with our standard combo power index, then add or subtract four points according to this table. We add four points to our standard CPI for a pair or for an ace-x combo, and we subtract four points for suited combos. That means that the value of suited aces remains unchanged, but offsuit aces are worth an extra four points. We also add four points to the CPI of our pocket pairs. We use this rule only in a jamming situation, which means we are jamming or calling a jam. Let's look at some examples. Ace two offsuit is normally worth 34 points, but we add another four points in a jamming situation for a total of 38 points. Pocket fours are normally worth 40, point, uh, 40 points, but in a jamming situation, we add another four points for a total of 44 points. 
and King Ten suited is worth 44 points in a jamming situation instead of its normal 48 points. No rule like this is ever perfect, but it is simple and it creates a fairly accurate strategy, which we will see later. Now we can create our small stack holy grail algorithms. Suppose we use our standard CPI algorithm to convert our GTO wizard frequencies to indexes. This graph shows the jamming and plane indexes for short stacks. The jamming indexes are the solid lines and the opening indexes are the dashed lines. Let's see how this works. Suppose we have an open opportunity in the low jack seat with 14 big blind effective stacks. Our jamming index is 47.4% as shown here. And our opening index is 40 points as shown here. So we would jam with a seven point tighter range than we would open with. Suppose we have ace 10 offsuit. Our CPI plane index is 42 points. So our hand is good enough to play. The jamming index for ace 10 offsuit is at four points higher, which is 46 points. So our hand is not good enough to jam. We can see from these curves that our jamming and playing indexes converge at about eight to 10 big blind effective stacks, depending on our table position. And since many of the combos in these ranges have mixed strategies, we can create a relatively simple holy grail small stack strategy. First, we use the same position index algorithm that we used for our large stack strategy, which is shown here. Then, we introduce our holy grail short stack algorithms. The first one is our open index, which is equal to our position index. This is the same algorithm as our large stack open algorithm, just extended down to 10 stacks. So we can open when a CPI of our hand is at least as large as our position index. <clears throat> what we have done here is to convert the very messy transition zone mixed strategy solutions into a simple open or fold pure strategy solution. This works well because the expected values for our various options are very close together, so it doesn't matter very much which action we actually take. The second small stack algorithm is our open jamming index with 10 stacks or smaller. We simply subtract five points from our, our position index and add back half of our effective stacks measured in big blinds. <clears throat> so our baseline strategy is simple. We never open jam with more than 10 stacks. We either open or fold, except sometimes we can limp from the small blind. And our strategy with 10 stacks and smaller is to always jam or fold. So how does this work in practice? Suppose we are in the cutoff with ace four offsuit. This has a CPI for opening of 36 points. That's 30 points for the ace, four points for the four, and two points for the three gapper. We add another four points to this index when we are in a jamming situation. Suppose we have 12 stacks, which is in the transition zone and is not a jamming situation. Since our cutoff position index is 36 points, we have a borderline open with this hand. Suppose we only have eight stacks. So now we are in the jamming zone. Our second algorithm has a jamming index of 35 points. So our 40 point ace four offsuit combo is easily strong enough to jam. But remember, this is just our baseline strategy. We must always adjust our decision in response to our poker landscape. We might jam wider when we are in late position and when our lefties are the short stacks, or we might convert some of our transition zone opening combos into jams in some circumstances. The first question we might ask is just how accurate are these algorithms? Especially since we have converted many mixed strategy combos into pure strategy combos. We can simply look at the EV error for each combo in each situation. Suppose we study the cutoff Holy Grail strategy with 14 stacks, as shown in this chart. The green cells indicate the combos that we will open with a 36 point CPI. And the numbers in the cells indicate the error we incur by opening or folding that particular combo. These errors are listed in units of 0.01 big blinds. For example, our error for open ace five offsuit instead of folding it is 0.02 big blinds. Since there are 12 combos of ace five offsuit, our 
total error would be 24 hundredths of a big blind, 0 .0, 0 0.24 big blinds. When we calculate this for every combo, our total error for playing the Holy Grail cutoff strategy with 14 stacks would be 11.34 big blinds. But the profit we make by playing perfectly would be 442 big blinds, so our error here is only 2.6%. We can repeat this calculation from every position for 17 stacks and smaller, which is summarized in this table. We can see that our errors are minor for every stack size and from every position, averaging about 1.5%. They do get a bit larger in late position, however, because the button and the cutoff GTO wizard strategies are much more complex than the early position strategies, so simplifying them is less accurate. We can also see that our 12 stack strategy is the least accurate. This is because GTO 12 stack solutions include a lot of jamming, but our holy grail strategy for 12 stacks is open or fold with no jamming. In fact, we could have set our crossover stack at about 12 big blinds instead of about 10 without much difference in accuracy. So when we have 12 stacks, we can decide to deviate from our open or fold baseline by jamming some combos when it seems like our best exploitive adjustment. But basically, our holy grail small stack strategy is an excellent place to begin. The real trick is to develop a sense of how to make reasonable adjustments from our baseline. Now let's look at reshoving, which is when we jam over an open. This also applies to jamming over a limp plus an open or jamming over an open plus a call. This graph shows our reshove index when we are on the button after an open from an earlier table position. For example, after a low jack uh, minus 2 open with 12 stacks, our reshove index is 47.4 points, as shown here. We can see that our reshove index is higher when the open comes from earlier positions. This is the gap principle in action. From curves like these, we can now construct the Holy Grail reshove algorithm. We reshove with the position index of Mr. Opener, plus, as shown in green, plus half of our stack. This is quite similar to, in form to our Holy Grail 3-bed algorithm, shown here. This similarity should be, seem reasonable uh, to you since we, uh, reshove is just an extreme type of a 3-bed we can see that these two algorithms mesh at 18 stacks. So generally, we should 3-bet normally with more than 18 stacks, and we should reshove with smaller stacks. There are some caveats to using this uh, strategy, however. First, we must reshove more tightly when Mr. Opener is tighter than GTO. This is a gap principle again. This gets complicated when Mr. Opener assumes an effective stack size that differs from what it is when it's our turn to act. We need to assume the villain's range is correct at the time of his open. Second, we must be aware of ICM and bubble considerations, which often dictate a much tighter reshove range. And finally, sometimes we are better off flatting or folding in our current hand even when our holy grail algorithms say otherwise, because we expect a better spot to, to come a little bit later. So how accurate is this reshoving strategy? We can study this just as we did earlier. Suppose the under the gun player opens the 2.0 big blinds and the action is on us. This table summarizes the error we incur by playing the holy grail reshove strategy, which shows an average error of only 2.0%. These errors are somewhat larger in lay position due to the increased complexity of the GTO solution, uh, mixed strategy solutions in lay position. But remember, these mixed strategies are, pre are present only to make our GTO hero unexploitable. So our true error should be much less. And also remember that this is just our baseline strategy. We will always, uh, nearly always, adjust our decision depending on our local poker landscape. Finally, we need a call-shove algorithm. In some ways, calling a jam is a simpler strategy than reshoving, since we can only call or fold. Actually, sometimes we can overshove in a real game, but this isn't modeled in a GTO wizard model. 
Anyway, suppose we are on the button and face a jam from an earlier position. This graph plots our call shove index after a jam from each position. For example, if the low jack minus two player jams, our call in the index would be 47.7 points with 12 stacks, as shown here. On the other hand, we could call we would call a cutoff jam with 42.7 um, point index, as shown here. Overall, we can represent these curves with a very simple algorithm. Our call shove index is just the position index of Mr. Jammer plus half of the effective stacks. This is identical to our reshove index, which makes this algorithm very simple to remember. But also remember that we must use the four point rule when calling a jam. There are the usual caveats, however. As always, we must call a jam more tightly when the villain is jamming more tightly than GTO. Again, this is just the gap principle. And we must assume the effective stacks in, uh, that are in place when the villain jammed are the ones that we use to make our decision. This could be different effective stacks than are currently in place when it is our turn to act. Second, we must be aware of ICM and bubble considerations, which often dictate a much higher, a much tighter reshove range. And finally, sometimes we are better off folding our current hand because we expect a better spot later on. On the other hand, we might not expect any better spot to materialize, in which case we might decide to call with marginal hands or even a few that are just barely not quite strong enough to call. So we can summarize the Holy Grail small stack strategy on just a single page. Once you understand it, you can refer to it later as a refresher. First, this is our position index algorithm. This is slightly more complex than our cash game position index algorithm, but you can easily memorize it with a few hours of online practice. We use this same algorithm for large stack play and small stack play. This is the combo power index algorithm, the same one that we use for all of our Holy Grail strategies. This panel summarizes the Holy Grail small stack strategy. First, we open with our position index, the same algorithm that we use for large stack play. We do this as long as the effective stacks are greater than 10 big blinds. Second, to jam with 10 stacks or smaller, we subtract five points from our position index and add half of our stack in big blinds. Next, we reshove, we reshove or call a shove with the position, position index of the villain, plus half of our stack size. Next, I did discuss this in the video, but we raise a limper with our open index plus one point and jam over a limper with our, our jam index plus one point. It is very important to consider ICM and ship utility influences on our baseline strategy. In some ways, this is the hardest thing for us to perfect. It is also why our baseline strategy doesn't need to be very accurate. Be careful with effective stack sizes. The effective stacks we see now are not always the effective stacks that our villain assumed when he made his play. And finally, use the four point rule when we are in a jamming situation. Let's look at an example. The action folds to us on the button, as shown here. We are not close to the bubble, but we are past the late entry period. We have an ace eight offsuit hand, which has a combo power index of 38 points. This is 30 points for the ace plus 8 points for the 8. Our position index from the button is 33 points since our 38 point hand is larger than our 33 point position index. So we can open to 2.0 big blinds. We have 14 big blind stack and the blinds have slightly larger 18 and 20 big blind stacks. So the effective stacks are 14 big blinds here. And we are in the transition zone, so our baseline strategy is to open or fold. But this strategy is designed to put us close to the correct decision in a tough GTO game. But this is a, actually a real game with flawed players. Both blinds have small stacks, and so might be less likely to call a jam since losing would cripple them. This improves our fold equity, which improves the chip EV of our jam. But is it enough to change our decision from opening to jamming? This is a basic 
chip utility decision. Additionally, we don't have a very long runway left. Our stack will drop to 11.5 big blinds in less than one orbit, and 9 big blinds in two orbits, and that's if the blinds don't increase. We would then be in the jamming zone. We might not see a better opportunity during this time. So this is a borderline hand for me. But in the absence of actual reads, I think it's best to jam while I have a big enough stack to benefit from a double up. It's interesting to see what GTO Wizard actually recommends. It has this as a pure strategy jam with an EV of 1.13 big blinds, but opening to two big blinds is only one tenth of a big blind worse. Even calling is pretty reasonable. So it seems that we can't really make a big mistake here against GTO players. Notice that if we had the 20, that if we had the 20 big blind stack and the blinds both had 14 big blind stacks, our holy grail analysis would be the same. But in that case, the blinds would be even more reluctant to call a jam and ace eight offsuit would definitely seem to be strong enough to jam. Versions of this lecture were presented at the Las Vegas Wednesday Poker Discussion Group in 2024. You can join us every Wednesday at Tommy Rockert's and you can join our Facebook group and see the agenda for upcoming meetings. That's all folks.